much rather be meeting in person this morning, but with concerns about the weather, uh, the deacons and I decided that this would be the uh, safest way uh, to spend time in God's Word uh, together this morning. We have pushed off the uh, installation service that was scheduled for today. That will be on uh, the 30th, and looking forward to having uh, Pastor Jay come in and preach that uh, service. I said, certainly, much rather be doing this in person. But uh, glad that we have the technology to be able to still gather uh, in God's Word uh, together this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning, we'll look at Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse uh, 1. We're going to look at the characteristics of humility and uh, going to use uh, John the Baptist as our example uh, this morning. I found this illustration during the course of his campaign for presidential uh, nomination. Adelaide Stevenson was being taxied to the airport. He introduced himself and struck up a conversation with the cabbie. People say I talk over the heads of the average man. What do you think, Mr. Stevenson said? The cab driver pondered the question. Well, Governor, he said, at length I understand you, but I'm not sure about the average man. Uh, we all tend to be a little bit uh, like that cabbie. We tend to be a little bit prideful uh, from time to time. Uh, while pride is condemned in God's Word, uh, humility is uh, enthusiastically uh, praised. Certainly pride is a snare. It was a snare that uh, tripped up King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. Uh, it tripped up Herod in Acts chapter uh, 12. Even uh, Peter in Matthew 26 when he said that he would never deny uh, Christ. He would never run. And, and Jesus reminded him that he, before the cock crows, uh, he will deny him three uh, times. Humility is what we'll be talking about uh, this morning. And humility is a virtue of great uh, importance. In Luke chapter 18, we see Jesus uh, speaking there. And he's uh, speaking about an incident that happened in the temple. And the Pharisees were there. And they were praying out loud about how thankful they were that they were not like uh, the tax collector. While the tax collector be on his chest... Praying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus said that the tax collector, rather than the Pharisees, left justified. Saying also that if anyone exalts himself, he will be humble. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. James chapter 4.10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Pride is lifting up ourselves, but humility is refusing to lift up uh, ourselves. Humility is uh, recognizing what we really are before God and serving Him and lifting Him up and not lifting up ourselves. Humility involves putting aside our personal desires and needs. It's moving beyond expectations of uh, preferential treatment, beyond saying, I deserve such this, or I deserve uh, that, I'm do this, or, or to do, do that. Um, it's beyond asking the question, you know, how can they treat me uh, this way? Humi humility, simply put, is being a willing and grateful uh, servant. John the Baptist, as we'll see uh, this morning, is a great example of humility for us uh, to follow. Our lives, uh, like John, should be characterized by humility. We're going to look at three things uh, this morning, three ways in which humility is reflected in our uh, lives. The th first thing that we see is that humility should be reflected in our service. Let's begin reading this morning, uh, Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. We exhibit humility when we serve someone greater than ourselves. It is clear from these verses who John is serving. He was serving the Lord Jesus Christ. John was a forerunner in the wilderness, blazing the trail 
for the one that would come after him, that one being uh, Jesus Christ. Mark quotes here uh, Malachi 3, 1 and verse 2, and then Isaiah uh, 40, verse 3, uh, in verse 3, likening John to the prophet Elijah. God's plans for John's life was that he would go out proclaiming the way of the coming Lord. Uh, Mark didn't go in uh, to a lot of uh, introduction for John here. Many in uh, this time would have known about the ministry of John. But he does tell us that his ministry was in uh, the desert. Now the, the idea of desert here is more than just a, a barren, uh, dry uh, land. Though that's probably where John uh, sort, of, sort of started his uh, ministry. But it also refers to a spiritually barren place. It's been said that it is in the deserts where God meets, reveals himself to, tests, and saves his people. Now, when people go off into the wilderness, they go off into a place that is uh, untouched by mankind uh, many times for the, I, the purpose of uh, symbolizing that uh, land. John was going out uh, to people that were spiritually uh, unreached. John was not going into the wilderness uh, for his own gain. He was going for the purpose of reaching people with the message of the coming uh, Lord. Many people uh, braved the wilderness for their own personal goals. I think about the early uh, settlers, settlers. They go for uh, financial gain. They go uh, to make a name uh, for themselves. Sometimes uh, both of these. But John's purpose for going to the wilderness uh, of the lost was to make known the name of Jesus Christ. If our focus is to make known the name of Jesus Christ, and that is foremost in our lives, it will greatly affect our lives. You see, this life is, is never about us. It is all about Him and seeing Him glorified, seeing Him uh, lifted up. I heard a story one time about a student of Charles Spurgeon, that great uh, preacher. It says that one of Spurgeon's students went into the pulpit with, a very, with every expression of confidence, but had an extremely difficult uh, time. He came down distressed, almost brokenhearted, and went to Spurgeon about it. The words of Spurgeon to him were these, If you had gone up as you came down, you would have come down as you went up. Our lives uh, should always be characterized by humility and humble service uh, to God, whether that be preaching or teaching or, or serving or, or just living out our daily uh, lives. The mindset is that we are serving someone that is greater than ourselves. A life of humble service enables us to call upon others uh, to humbly uh, serve God, to humble themselves uh, before God. In verse 4, we see one of the distinct aspects of John's ministry, and that is of baptism or uh, immersion. On numerous accounts here in Mark, uh, we see John referred to as John the Baptist. Now, this was not a representation of his uh, denomination as it was uh, what he did. In the Greek, he is referred to as John the Baptizer. Uh, make no mistake in reading these verses uh, this morning. Baptism is no way a means of uh, salvation. It was not in John's day and it is not uh, in our day. No amount of water, no amount of times of being dunked under the water will merit salvation uh, in our lives. Not even if you were baptized by John uh, the baptizer. Uh, John only baptized those who had uh, repented of their sins, who had confessed them, and as a result of that, had forgiveness of their sins. Baptism, uh, for these that we're reading about this morning, like us, uh, symbolized a cleansing from our sins as a result of our uh, repentance. Not only was John's life one of humble service uh, to God, but he went about helping other people uh, commit to serving God, to commit to humble service to God. John encouraged them to make a decision. If you were to look over in Luke chapter 3 beginning in verse uh, 7, you'll see there that John encouraged people to make a decision uh, to follow after uh, God, helping them to understand uh, that decision and then uh, directing them to live out uh, that decision. You see, humility is reflected in our 
lifestyle. John told those in Luke chapter 3 that had an abundance to share. He told the, the tax collectors to deal fairly with the people. He told the soldiers not to intimidate, not to falsely accuse, and to be content. So humility should be reflected in our lifestyle. Let's continue reading there in verse 6. And it says, Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild uh, honey. Uh, we see that humility exhibits itself in an appropriate uh, lifestyle. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. Uh, this um, description that we see of John is that of a typical uh, holy man in the Near uh, East. His wardrobe appears similar to that of Elijah we see in 2 Kings uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 8, being described as a hairy man and wearing a leather uh, belt. We see what he ate here. He ate locusts and he also ate uh, wild honey. Now, I don't know about uh, you this morning, but I'm thankful that God has not called us uh, to wear camel's hair and eat uh, locusts. Honey, I can deal with that one. I, I like that. But God has also not called us uh, to a life of luxury. He has not called us to a life of convenience. He has not called us to a life of comfort. He has called us to a life of humble service and putting the needs of others before ourselves. Sacrificing to serve God better. Uh, we exhibit humility when our lifestyle is cons consistent with our testimony. Not only did John call others to a life of humility, but he demonstrated it in himself. Now we can sort of contrast John to the religious leaders of that day. The religious leaders of that day, many of them sought after positions and titles. They sought after power and esteem. Uh, they liked the exalted seats in the synagogue. They liked the elaborate uh, parties where they would lavish themselves with the finest uh, things in life. They liked plush clothes and they liked to declare that they were righteous even though they were not. And we see that in sharp contrast to the clothing that John wore and the, the diet uh, that he had. You know, we still have people in our day, religious leaders, uh, that, that do not practice this type of humility. Uh, they desire uh, to be served rather than serve. They seek big houses and fat checking accounts, and nice cars and, and extravagant wardrobes, but we don't see these things in the life of John. John had it right. Inwardly, his desire was humble service. And it was reflected uh, on the outside by the way that he lived. Our lives uh, don't need to be about fame for us, only fame for Jesus. In the year 1847, a doctor from Edinburgh, Sir James Simpson, Simpson discovered that chloroform could be used as an anesthetic to render people insensible to the pain of surgery. From his early experiments, Dr. Simpson made it possible for people to go through the most dangerous operations without fear, pain, and suffering. Some people even claim that it was the most significant discovery of modern medicine. Some years later, while lecturing at the University of Edinburgh, Dr. Simpson was asked by one of his students, what do you consider to be the most valuable discovery of your lifetime? To the surprise of his students who expected him to refer to chloroform, Dr. Simpson replied, my most valuable discovery was when I discovered myself a sinner and that Jesus Christ was my Savior. And to that we say, Amen. This life is not about us. It is not about our accomplishments. It is about God and bring glory and honor uh, to Him. Third thing I want you to see uh, this morning is that humility should be reflected in our speech. Let's continue reading there in verse uh, 7. And it says, And he preached, saying, there comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and lose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Humility is reflected in the content of John's uh, message. The content of John's message was short and to the point. There is one coming that is mightier than I. There is one coming that, that I don't even have... Uh, that I'm not even able to, to unloose his sandal or take his, his, his sandal off. One that will baptize with the Holy uh, Spirit. John 
did not emphasize himself or what he was doing. His emphasis was on the superiority of Jesus who would be coming after him. John preached that there was coming at one after him that would change lives. Uh, D.L. Moody tells a story about Dr. Uh, Bonner that once said that uh, he could tell when a Christian was growing in proportion to his growth in proportion to his growth in grace as he would elevate his master, talk less of what himself was doing, and become smaller and smaller in his own esteem. Well, until, like the morning star, he faded away before the rising sun. This life, what, the way we, what we do, uh, what we say, the, the way we carry ourselves, the way we dress, it is not about us. The things that, the things that we try to acquire, it is not about us. It is about seeing God lifted up, seeing God uh, glorified, and us living in humility. But certainly humility is, is seen in our speech. And I just want to ask you this this morning. If you were to take an inventory of your words, uh, if you were to jot down the things that you talk about as you go through your day, what would be the ongoing theme of your life? What types of things would make up the majority of your conversation? Would it be things pertaining to God? Uh, would it be conversations about exalting God and lifting up God or, or lifting up yourself? How would your speech be characterized? Would it be humility or pride, giving or receiving? Serving or being uh, served. With the majority of your speech, if we took an inventory of our speech as we went about our days, would it be about temporal things or the eternal things of God? Now listen, humility does not exclude the boldness of speech. The church in Acts 4 prayed and they were filled with the Spirit and spoke the Word of God uh, with boldness. In Luke chapter 3, we read that John spoke to the multitude. And he called them vipers and warned them to flee from the wrath that was to come. You see, humility is not necessarily not speaking boldly about the things of God, but it is speaking about God and not speaking about ourselves. Certainly, we still have the freedom uh, of speech. I, I wonder so many times how much longer that's going to be allowed. It seems sometimes that you have freedom of speech as long as you don't speak against sin or you don't speak about uh, things of the Bible. But you know, everyone is, is speaking out about what they believe. And we, as Christians, should be proclaiming the gospel. We should be proclaiming it uh, with boldness, but also with humility. Uh, the book of Mark does not contain uh, the nativity story that we see in, in Matthew and, and Luke. Nonetheless, it is called uh, the gospel because it contains the gospel. The gospel or the good news is that God has provided salvation for all men through the life, death, and resurrection of His Son, uh, Jesus Christ. But it's been said that the book of Mark could be summed up in one verse, and that is Mark chapter 10, verse 45, where Jesus says, For even the Son of Man, Jesus Himself, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many, to die on the cross for the sins of the world. This was the message. This was the, 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 the message uh, that John uh, came to share with the world. The message that he came to preach in humility. In Matthew chapter 18 verses 1 through 5 Jesus says that if you enter into the kingdom of God you must enter humbly as a little child. You know children are for the most part incapable of, of helping themselves. They have to rely on their parents. They have to rely on uh, older adults for, for everything. Jesus is saying that if we are to be saved, then we must put our trust, we must put our faith in Him alone. So certainly this morning, if you're uh, listening to this message and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then I encourage you to do that. Just call out to Him wherever you're sitting, your, your couch, your chair, your bed, uh, your, your dining room table, wherever you're sitting, just call out to Jesus this morning. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that, that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and, and, and just call out to Him in repentance, asking Him to come in your heart and be your Savior and Lord. And, and certainly if you've uh, made that decision already, I just want to encourage you uh, to live a life of humility uh, because certainly that is the only way that we can please uh, God. Let's pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to really just go to your word and be challenged uh, from it. Lord God, I, I, I'm thankful uh, for this um, peak we have at John the Baptist and, and his life of humility. Lord God, and, and what another example we have of how we should live our lives in, in humility. Lord God, putting others before ourselves. This life is not about us. It is about you and serving you. And I pray, Lord God, that we would be constantly reminded of that. Once again, I thank you for the technology we have that we can uh, meet in our own little places, our own homes this morning with the threat of, of dangerous weather and still uh, come together to, to, to study your word uh, together. I thank you for that, Lord God. I pray that you would just be with everyone, keep them uh, safe, Lord God, as many of them still have to travel and go out and do things. I pray that you would just keep them safe, that you would just uh, keep them healthy and and be with all the other ministries that we have going on uh, in the life of our church. So many things getting geared up with the new year. I pray, Lord God, that you would just uh, be with those things, that we would always seek your face, Lord God. We would always seek to glorify and honor you in all those things. We'll just give you all the glory and honor for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, now, just a few things by way of announcement. Of course, on Wednesday night, Lord willing and weather permitting, uh, we plan to uh, have the adult Bible study. Also, a children's choir. I think there's supposed to be a meal there at 6 o'clock. I encourage everyone to come out and be part of that. And then, of course, uh, a week from uh, today, hopefully, weather permitting, we'll be back in our church service and look forward to uh, worshiping with everyone in person. And uh, we will see you soon. Thank you.